Hey guys, welcome to my video on price floors. Uh, we're going to talk today about what happens when the government tells people in a market that there is a minimum legal price. And first I want to give a little bit of context, give some past and present examples. The most common and widely known example is a minimum wage, where we tell people you're not allowed to pay, we tell businesses you have to pay at least this amount. But there's also times and places like in Pennsylvania where they have one on milk. Make sure that those dairy farmers get their fair share. There are st there used to be stock brokerage fees with minimum prices. Uh, there used to be minimums on airline tickets. There's been lots of times where we've had government intervene in a market. And it almost always has the same goal, which is to help out the seller. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about how that works in a supply and demand market. And then... We'll talk about some of the inefficiencies that it creates. So here's our functioning market. And the government intervenes and puts in a price floor. Notice we put the floor above the equilibrium price because currently market forces are trying to push prices down. If the price is high, it's trying to fall. You put the floor under the price and it stops it from falling farther. Now, a couple of things. What does this do to our market? Well, well, the quantity supplied increases because at a higher price, sellers are willing to sell more. The other effect is that when you push prices up, the quantity demanded falls because when you push prices up, consumers don't want to buy as many. Now, we could talk about how this creates a surplus and that's inefficient. But I want to put some like more important information into this. So one thing to note is that when there's a surplus, when the quantity supplied equal is greater than the quantity demanded, what quantity gets sold in the market? It's QD. How do you know? Well, that lower quantity out of QS and QD is the only one where there are both buyers and sellers. Any quantity above QD will have sellers, but no buyers. QD is how many transactions will occur. But notice QD is less than equilibrium. The fact that it is less than equilibrium means that we have fewer transactions now with the minimum price law than we did before. That means there are fewer mutually beneficial transactions and if you've learned about consumer and producer surplus yet, there is less total surplus than in, the, than in an equilibrium situation. That is the sterilized version of what is inefficient about a price floor. So what effect does this have on the market in real terms? Not just a, hey, we lost some total surplus and that's pretty bad kind of thing, but uh, what does it mean? Well, sellers have to compete in some way. They have to try to bring the demanders to them. And since everything's expensive, what will often happen is that they will try to sell you based on non-price competition. They'll try to provide better service. Back when the airline industries were highly regulated and had price floors, they would try to be like, hey, we're the best one because you can have steak dinners. And then Southwest Airlines, oh yeah, well you can have free booze on our airlines. And they've tried to find non-price ways to compete. Stuff that a lot of consumers wouldn't buy if it was sold separately. We'd rather A lot of people would rather pay a lower price. Eh, some won't though. But in any case, when we force the market to lower quantities, we're going to create losses. Because the QD is smaller than Q star. And it will force firms to start competing in ways other than price, which might be a good thing, might be a bad thing, depends on who you are. But the fact that it's forced means it's inefficient. So now before we close, let's try to figure out who wins and who loses from this price floor. And so I'm going to add these. A, B, C, D, E are areas between these curves. And this is sometimes a shortcut we use in principles classes to help us measure consumer and producer surplus. Before the price floor, consumer surplus was equal to A and B 
and B. So those three areas put together. Or sorry, producer surplus was equal to C and E. After the price floor, consumer surplus is equal to just A. Because B and D are now below the price curve. And producer surplus, see everything below price above supply is B plus C. I'm going to leave D and E out, though. Why am I leaving D and E out? It's because those transactions never occur. No surplus is generated by those transactions because those transactions don't happen. So after the price floor, our consumer surplus is just this area. And our producer surplus looks like this. Everything below price, above supply. But we also have this area, this D and E, which is something that we call a deadweight loss. A deadweight loss is a loss of surplus that comes from a market being inefficient. In this case, the market is inefficient because we made it inefficient. Now we can have examples of markets that are inefficient all on their own, but in the case of a competitive market, if you change the price, you're gonna make it inefficient. So that I think covers the main points. I'm sure there's lots of details for you to fill in on your own, but I hope this was helpful. And if not, too bad. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy econing.